Today, I want to discuss something that I don't think many people know a lot about. It is something that I think, given the time period, we should gain a better understanding of because we may have to entertain some things in the near future, and our health and survival may depend on the amount of understanding we have of it. And that is ash. Atmospheric dust and ashes. The reason I want to talk about this is because we are living in a time where there is mass uncertainty regarding our health, our economy, and our survival. The earth is going through some changes. We all know that. And when you have an atmosphere that is shrinking with higher wind speeds, a changing jet stream, an increase in moisture, stronger, more frequent storms, more volcanism, more wildfires, cosmic radiation and cosmic dust from all those close flybys from these asteroids. See, people forget that even though these asteroids that fly by us don't hit us, that dust coming off of them as they fly by does. There may come a time when some of us won't be able to leave our homes without a mask, but not because of a virus, but because of the air. So first of all, not all ash and dust is created equal. For example, this comes from Discovery Magazine. Why volcanic ash and wildfire ash are very different hazards. So how are they different? Wildfire ash is made from burning organic material, stuff like trees. As they burn, they can produce three different materials that will drift in the air char, soot, and ash. The first, char, is organic material that didn't burn all the way. The second, soot, is fine carbon particles from the burning process. The last, ash, is the light-colored fine powder left from burning. All three of these materials are carbon-rich and ash is also rich in calcium. Unlike wildfire ash, volcanic ash is not caused by burning. Volcanic ash is made of tiny fragments of rock and volcanic glass. It's generated during an explosive eruption where rock can be pulverized or magma can be shattered. The heat from the eruption helps send the ash skyward with volcanic gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. The article goes on to discuss the difference in the way the wind carries wildfire and volcanic ash. It goes into volcanic silica and how breathing it in can cause silicosis, which is deep tissue lung scarring. Also because of the makeup of volcanic ash, it's much denser and it cakes up like heavy snow. It's sometimes even six times as dense as water. And it just doesn't go away like wildfire ash because it's particles of rocks and glass. Keep in mind that an increase in high speed winds in certain areas have loosened and kicked up some of this volcanic ash that has already settled. So we have cosmic dust. Now cosmic dust comes into our atmosphere at 5 to 300 metric tons a day. This is what John Plain, a chemistry professor at the University of Leeds in the UK says about cosmic dust. This was published on Universe Today. Cosmic dust is associated with the formation of noctilucent clouds, the highest clouds in the Earth's atmosphere. The dust particles provide a surface for the clouds' ice crystals to form. These clouds develop during summer in the polar regions and they appear to be an indicator of climate change, said Plain. The metals from the dust also affect ozone chemistry in the stratosphere. 
The amount of dust present will be important for any geoengineering initiatives to increase sulfate aerosol to offset global warming. Cosmic dust also fertilizes the ocean with iron, which has potential climate feedbacks because marine phytoplankton emit climate-related gases. With that said, do you guys remember hearing about a hole in the ozone over Antarctica? Well, just last month, the World Meteorological Organization published the annually occurring ozone hole over the Antarctic is one of the largest and deepest in recent years. Analysis show that the hole has reached its maximum size. The 2020 ozone hole grew rapidly from mid-August and peaked at around 24 million square kilometers in early October. It now covers 23 million square kilometers, above average for the last decade and spreading over most of the Antarctic continent. So this is the question. If the patterns of Earth changes we see right now continue, with a rising pattern, how is this going to affect the health of the world population? Right now there are 43 volcanoes currently erupting around the world. What we don't know are the number of volcanoes that are about to erupt and when. There are about 13 inactive volcanoes that they watch regularly and then there are active volcanoes that they monitor for eruption and those could go at any moment. The Iceland volcano that erupted in 2011, a report came out last month that it's getting ready to erupt again. So with winds picking up ash and dust, with volcanism and wildfires, with cosmic dust, combined with an increase in atmospheric moisture and pressure, it could get to a point where it may cause some serious issues in many places, especially if we have an increase in fires due to small meteorite impacts, you see? Now, if this becomes an issue, you'll know it. Not at first because the particles are small, but it will collect at moments. In the gutters of buildings, siding, on the body of cars. This actually happened in Texas already, on two occasions. It happened in 2013 and it happened earlier this year. Back in 2013, they had three theories. The first theory is that it's cedar pollen that came in from the Texas Hill Country. The second theory is that the dust blew in from West Texas. The final theory is that it was mud showers from Mexico. This year, they had a different explanation. The National Weather Service put out that storms picked up dust from plowed fields and then dumped them back on us. But this is, of course, just another guess. And it just leaves those who were affected by it with no answers. But now in the same month, they put this out. That a Texas A&M team discovered red Saharan African dust above Houston. Remember we also had dust from Africa blanketing the Caribbean this past summer? Coughing, scratchy throat, irritated sinuses, shortness of breath, headache, chest pain, irritated eyes, runny nose, asthma, exacerbation, silicosis. On the severe end, you can have instances where a person's eyes start to bleed. These are biological symptoms associated with breathing in wildfire ash or volcanic ash and dust. What's interesting is that what's interesting is that the Houston Methodist leading medicine stated that symptoms like a dry cough, wheezing, shortness of breath, mild chest pain, symptoms associated with red dust from the Sahara in Texas mimics the symptoms of COVID. By the way, when it comes to ash and dust, you really need a respirator, preferably with a tank, because cloth and paper mask offer little to no protection. Oh, but the mask we're wearing now will help protect us. Uh, no, they won't. Remember the Dust Bowl in America in the 1930s? Look at what they had to walk around with. 
and the Dust Bowl lasted for about nine years. Massive crop loss. The Great Depression was kicking in. So don't feel too bad about what's happening to us right now. Winter is upon us, I think. Right now we're getting summer and winter in the same day. Check out the blizzard Montana just had. I have a lot to cover coming up, so stay tuned, everyone. I really want to get into some topics in the area of survival preparedness. But until then, folks, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all very soon.